Welcome to a large model showman's engine. This one is part 32, machining the parts for a steam raising blower adapter. I've had this old steam raising blower for quite a long time, so long in fact, I haven't got a clue where it came from in the first place. It's been well used and the end of it that goes into the chimney is very sooty, very oily and very dirty. So I'll start off this video by cleaning it off and look at the state of my hands. I need to make a blower for the traction engine. The traction engine actually raises steam without one, particularly if I use the very long extension chimney, but it's still very smelly and very smoky. The shorter extension chimney is for when you drive the traction engine. It makes it so the steam and smoke goes over your head when you're driving it, because it's difficult enough to see where you're going in the first place. What I need is a piece of metal to fit down inside the short extension chimney, and the only piece I could find was this. A large billet of aluminium which I promptly put into the band saw and after about half an hour the end of it fell off into the basket. Videoing this I lost the will to live on several occasions. But eventually here it is sat on the bench. This is the plan. I found this very interesting piece of brass in my box of very interesting pieces of brass. And this piece of brass in conjunction with the piece of aluminium that almost fits in the top of the extension chimney should be a perfect conversion for the blower to fit the traction engine. Here's the kit of parts and the rest of this video is really about machining them. The first thing I had to do was remove the chuck jaws because these are no good for holding large diameter pieces of metal. After removing them I cleaned up the front of the chuck, fitted the external jaws and mounted a piece of aluminium in the chuck. I'm tapping it with the soft hammer just to align it so it runs concentrically. And now sit back and relax because it's turning time. First of all I face across the front. And this will true up the piece of aluminium because I need to drill a hole through the centre plus I need to machine a register on it to closely fit the hole in the piece of brass. More about this later. There's a tendency when doing jobs like this, particularly on a small lathe, to take too deep a cut. And that's what this noise is, it's chattering a bit. But look at the pretty pattern in the middle. Welcome to ornamental turning for beginners. Well, maybe not. Normal service is now resumed, removing the sharp edge with a file and then I reverse it in the chuck, tap it into place with a soft hammer and face across the other side. I've shortened the sequence somewhat because you don't want to see exactly the same again. I cleaned across the front to remove the saw marks and now I need to machine almost to the centre but not quite because this is where I start to cut the register so that the piece of brass is exactly centralised on the aluminium part. Here I'm checking the dimensions with the caliper and it's somewhere near. While I'm voicing over this video the power keeps going off the strange noises that you keep hearing has nothing to do with the power. I'm taking too deep a cut. Power cuts in the village where I live in East Yorkshire are very frequent. How can this be in 2020 in England? And every time the power goes off, I lose everything that I've done in the last five minutes. This is a real pain. To prevent this happening in future, I've just been online and bought two UPS units. UPS stands for Uninterruptible Power Supply. But in the meantime, before they arrive, I just hope that the power stabilises. The good news is, the brass part is a perfect fit on the aluminium block. It's time now for a drilling frenzy. First of all, with a small drill, and then working up the sizes until I get a reasonable sized hole in the piece of aluminium. I've really speeded this up. When you work with aluminium, it's very important to use very sharp tools. These drills are one imperial size down from the sizes I would normally use, so therefore they're slightly sharper. During the turning process and the drilling job, you will notice that there's quite a lot of metal swarf flying about the lathe. There'll be even more very shortly because I'm going to use this boring tool to cut the hole to the size I need it to fit the blower into. And here is the boring tool I'm going to use. This was sent to me by a man called Dan and it's a really good quality, replaceable tip boring tool. Time for the health and safety notice. As you will see now, there's quite a lot of swarf being produced. In fact, from the beginning of this machining operation, including the drilling, an awful lot of this stuff is produced. So you have two choices. You can either be sensible and remove it frequently using a pair of pliers, 
deposit it in a suitable receptacle for disposal or you can pick at the bits with your fingers and cut your fingers to ribbons. When I take too deep a cut it shatters a bit so I'm spraying it with some WD-40. Paraffin, white spirit or even WD-40 as I've just used is quite a good lubricant when you're cutting aluminium. It still doesn't decrease the amount of swarf made though. I've just removed more of it using my pair of pliers. Watching all this swarf it occurs to me that if you're a bit weird you could save this swarf until Christmas and use it in place of tinsel for trimming your Christmas tree. Lethal tinsel. An entirely new concept. But I think for the moment I'll just dispose of it by removing it with a pair of pliers and putting it in the rubbish bin, not the recycle bin. I really don't think a scrapyard would thank you very much for a box full of mixed metal swarf. And that answers the many questions of what I do with the swarf that I receive from many YouTube viewers. And during the short time that I've been explaining about health and safety, the hole in the big piece of aluminium is just about the right size. After a very fine, final cut, the blower fits in the aluminium block perfectly. The final part of the machining job was to turn the part round in the chuck like this, move the angle of the top slide a few degrees, and turn a very slight taper on the piece you see. And this makes it much easier to fit in the top of the extension chimney. And that's it for this video about machining the parts. I'll finish it off in the next episode. I'd just like to say, stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.